Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So far we have been talking about uh, certain aspects of crystals and other structures wherein there is no time element that means the structure is given to you with defects and that is what it remains. Here we bring in certain kinetic aspects when we talk about diffusion of solids. This will be a brief excursion from the usual theme of the lectures, but this is important because it is important for us to understand that how um, a material changes its composition with time and what are the important implications of these in terms of the science of the material and the technological applications. So, in this context we will talk about the fixed laws and certain atomic mechanisms which will underlie the diffusion process. The standard text in this area is the one by uh, Professor P. G. Schumann and uh, there are other texts also which students may refer to. If you want to understand material science then we cannot ignore the roles of diffusion in material science and with any materials related phenomena one must understand diffusion. And in the current chapter we focus on solid state diffusion in crystalline materials. So, suppose you are talking about an oxidation process occurring in metals on the surface, you are talking about a powder metallurgical process wherein you are trying to start with the powder and you are going to sinter the powder to make a compact you are talking about doping of semiconductors in which case a very small quantity of say a p type dopant is sent into silicon or you are talking about surface hardening of steels using a process known as carburizing or you are talking about how precipitates in a material which have been added to increase the strength of a material age or coarsen with time or you are talking about damage mechanisms of creep which means that the material has been exposed to high temperatures for long time and the material uh, undergoes deformation as constant load or stress or you are talking about many other materials related phenomena then we have to invoke diffusion. So, diffusion is universal and uh, when you are talking about solid state diffusion in crystalline materials a uh, lot of important aspects come into play which um, students of material science need to understand. The roles uh, listed here like oxidation of metals, sintering, doping of semiconductors, surface carburizing of steel, aging of precipitates in uh, precipitation hardened system or creep of metals at high temperatures are just a few examples and there are many more important areas in which we have to talk about diffusion. One other example would be there is a process known as diffusion bonding when two materials are joined by using the process of diffusion. Let us start with a gaseous example though we are going to focus only on diffusion in uh, crystalline materials. Suppose we consider a large chamber which has been split into two parts using a hard wall which is shown here in grey colour and a movable piston which is right at the centre shown in the orange colour. One side of this chamber has a ga gas like argon, the other side of the chamber has a more lighter gas like hydrogen which can diffuse faster. Now, what happens is that when these two the connection is made between these two sides of the chamber then argon will diffuse from the left to the right and hydrogen will tend to diffuse from the right to the left, but the rate of diffusion of hydrogen will be higher and therefore, the piston which is a movable piston the orange colored piston will move towards the right and in other words the piston will move towards the slower diffusing uh, the faster diffusing species to be more precise moves to the slower moving species and therefore, you will notice that the volume of the left hand chamber increases on the motion of the piston. This is an example which can be thought which can have a solid state analog and this solid state analog leads to an effect called the Kirkendall effect and analogous to a chamber with two gases here there are two materials A and another material B in contact. 
between the two materials like a separator we had in the previous case of a chamber a wall. Here we have a marker, the marker is usually a material which is considered inert and which will not diffuse either into uh, A or, or into B. In other words the marker remains even after the, diff after the diffusion experiment has started. Now what will happen if you heat the system and allow mass transport? Similar to the case of the gas flowing from the right to left and left to right, uh, we will assume that the gas B has a faster diffusion rate or a motion rate into gas, the material B has a faster diffusion rate into material A and the material A has a slower diffusion rate as compared to um, B into A, the A into B is a slower process. Then we would observe that the marker actually moves towards the right, in other words it moves towards in the direction of the slower moving species. So, we will notice that after this diffusion experiment has been started, we will leave a sufficient amount of time, the marker would have moved to the right. So, to repeat the gist of the experiment, this effect in which a bimaterial uh, contact is made with a marker which is essentially inert in both the materials and we start the diffusion experiment and typically for this you will heat up the material so that the kinetics is becomes faster. And then what you see at the end of the experiment is that this inert marker move towards, moves towards or moves in the direction of the slower moving species. So, this effect is called the Kirkendall effect. Now, we are in a position to um, in some sense to define what is diffusion and also when would we ask questions like when would diffusion occur, what are the relevant parameters which control diffusion and what are the underlying mechanisms which will give rise to diffusion. So, a basic definition a simple definition of diffusion would be it is a mass flow process by which species change their position relative to their neighbors. Suppose you are talking about flow of water down, downstream in a river then this is does not call diffusion this is just for instance simple flow, but suppose the atomic species in the current context move relative to their neighbors such a process is called diffusion and usually this kind of a diffusion is driven by two, two things are very necessary when you are talking about diffusion, one is thermal energy and second thing is a gradient. What kind of gradients can cause diffusion? Typically these gradients could be concentration gradient or a more precisely a chemical potential gradient, it could be a gradient in an electric field, it could be a gradient in a magnetic field or even stress can cause diffusion. But in the current chapter we will restrict ourselves to diffusion down the uh, concentration gradient noting fully well that actually at the heart of the driving of downhill a concentration gradient is actually a chemical potential gradient and there are cases wherein a species may diffuse up a concentration gradient, but still it is actually going downhill in chemical potential. So, suppose I am talking about a crystalline material, I need a I need some thermal energy, I need a gradient and this thermal energy causes vibrations of atoms in the material. These vibrations ultimately may lead to atomic jumps at the atomic level and when all these atomic jumps which are random in the absence of a what you might call a concentration gradient or any gradient for that matter, when there is a presence of a concentration gradient then the species will have a net flow in one direction and therefore, this leads to diffusion. So, the heart of all this uh, diffusion are atomic jumps which are caused by the thermal energy which leads to thermal vibrations. To summarize this slide, diffusion is a mass flow process by which species change their position with respect to the neighbors. A diffusion process is driven by a gradient and this gradient could be a chemical potential gradient, an electric, magnetic or a stress based uh, gradient and you need thermal energy and the role of thermal energy is in causing atomic vibrations which finally leads to atomic jumps and these random atomic jumps in the presence of a gradient actually leads to a net flow in one direction. So, we start one of the important uh, quantities in diffusion is the flux of material and flux can be defined as flow of matter per unit area per unit time. So, suppose I consider a unit area A as in this figure here and I am talking about flow of matter and this is net flow of matter 
in a direction shown by this arrow, <coughs> then the flux would be this 1 by area into number of atoms crossing this unit area per unit time and therefore, the units of flux could be atoms per meter square per second and we will use this as a basic definition in understanding the various laws and we will also describe the laws known as the fixed laws of diffusion. So, suppose I am talking about diffusion of a species of B which is moving into A, this is a simplistic description. So, we are not actually talking about inter diffusion, but a species B moving into A and we also additionally assume something known as steady state conditions. We will have a few more things to say about the steady state conditions uh, in one of the coming slides, but essentially steady state conditions mean that flux the, uh, that the flux is not a function of x or time that means not a function of position or of time and essentially physically speaking there is no accumulation of matter in the material. So, it is reasonable to assume that this flux which is the number of atoms which cross a particular unit area in a unit time is directly proportional to the concentration gradient and we, as we had pointed before truly speaking we have to consider the chemical potential gradient. So, J the flux is directly proportional to dc by dx and the proportionality constant is d which is called the diffusivity or the diffusion coefficient. <coughs> and this d as we shall see later is a function of the temperature at which the diffusion experiment is being carried out. Now, suppose we write down the larger expression for flux and this expression which is in the blue box is called the fixed first law which says that j equal to minus d dou c by dou x and the negative sign in the front implies that the flux is down the concentration gradient. Now, we can write down the expression for j which we considered in the previous slide as 1 by a d n by d t. Therefore, j becomes 1 by a d n by d t is equal to minus d d c by d x and therefore, if you want to write down the expression for number of atoms crossing this area in a uh, interval of time d t then it becomes d n by d t is equal to minus d a d c by d x. In other words, the concentration gradient is related to the number of atoms crossing this area per unit time and the heart of this expression is this material parameter known as diffusivity. As we shall see later this diffusivity not only depends on the temperature, but also depends on the kind of species diffusing and in other words the mechanism of diffusion and additionally the diffusivity could also be a function of the concentration of the components and we shall see that if there is a simplification possible then we may consider it independent of the concentration of the components. One other equation which might be of interest to those is a familiar equation known as the continuity equation in which we talk about the concentration changing with time into in a delta x length of material which is related to the flux gradient as dou j by dou x into delta x. So, let us analyze this equation we just now derived a little more. The left hand side d n by d t is number of atoms of A crossing into the material B per unit time. On the right hand side is the material parameter d and the negative as I pointed out is to accommodate the fact that this flow is down the concentration gradient. The d is known as the diffusion coefficient or diffusivity. A is the cross sectional area across which the diffusion is taking place and dc by dx is the concentration gradient. And often as a first approximation we will assume that d is not a function of time or of concentration. So, we have used a term that we will often consider something known as a steady state diffusion. So, what is steady state diffusion and what is the opposite of that which is non steady state diffusion. In steady state diffusion the flux is not a function of either the position in the material or of time and even when you are talking about steady state either we can have diffusivity which is a function of the concentration or diffusivity which is not a function of the concentration. So, and in non steady state diffusion the flux would be a function both of the position and time and in non steady state diffusion again we can talk about the diffusivity being a function of the concentration or as a simplification the diffusivity being not a function of the concentration of the species. For most purposes during these elementary lectures we shall talk about what we might call the uh, steady state diffusion 
and we shall see that there are some simplifications possible when we consider steady state conditions. Under steady state conditions the concentration change with time at any point x in the material is 0 and equivalently we can write that the, the flux change at a the gradient in flux at a certain time is also equivalent to 0. And now suppose we take this aspect dou j by dou x and substitute for j in terms of the fixed first law which is what is substituted here. Then we can write do minus dou j by dou x of minus d dou c by dou x is equal to 0 and further if I assume that the diffusivity is constant in other words we are assuming that the diffusivity is not a function of the uh, concentration of the species then we can take the d out of the equation and we can write down the expression as for, st uh, for steady state condition as d dou square c by dou x square is equal to 0. In other words if my curvature of the c x plot is 0 that means that the slope of the c x plot is a constant under steady state condition. In other words under steady state conditions if the diffusivity is not a function of the concentration then the slope of the c x plot will be a constant. And so suppose to understand this physically suppose I have a higher concentration of material on left hand side of a plate which is shown in blue color here and a lower concentration on the right hand side. That means that I would expect that the material say now we considered B in A would diffuse from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. Under steady state conditions I would assume that there is no accumulation of mass within this blue plate of material and whatever mass enters this blue plate of material leaves from the left hand side actually leaves from the right hand side. So, this is the steady state conditions and further as we saw just now if the concentration or the diffusivity is not a function of the concentration then the slope of the C x plot would be constant in other words I would obtain the line which is shown by the dotted line here. So, this would be the profile of the concentration across the blue plate under steady state conditions given that the diffusivity is not a function of the concentration. However, if d is not constant there are two possibilities though we are not going into the details of this if we can write the fact that d dou c by dou x will be a constant that means that either d can increase with concentration or d can decrease with concentration and under these two conditions we would obtain not a straight line profile of concentration from the left hand side of the plate to the right hand side of the plate, but we would obtain a curved profile as shown by this brown line or the green line. So, under simplified circumstances we want to consider what you might call steady state conditions and further the fact that the diffusivity uh, can be approximated perhaps to the that it is not a function of the concentration. In that case the concentration profile would be safe uh, straight between uh, under steady state conditions, but if the concentration um, diffusivity is a function of the concentration then we would obtain a curved profile and for the case when d decreases with c then the slope will increase with c and for the other case when d increases with the concentration then the slope of course the slope we are talking of the c x plot decreases with c and thus would lead to the two cases which are marked in green and brown. So, to summarize this slide there can be steady state and non steady state diffusion and in each one of these further there could be a sub classification based on the fact if the diffusivity is a function of the concentration or if it is not a function of the concentration under the most simplified circumstances that is the steady state and the diffusivity not being a function of the concentration we would obtain a linear profile under of the concentration with the position in a steady state condition. Now, we move on to what is known as the fixed second law and in fixed second law suppose I have a length of material delta x across which I am considering the flow of uh, diffusion of a material A or, or atoms of A in this direction from to left to right. The flux entering this cross section A here or I may call it cross section C 1 here or and leaving at this second cross section here at this point 
the net accumulation of matter between these two lines which are shown in brown is the flux entering the is the flux entering at the left hand side which is given by j x minus the flux which is actually leaving at the right hand side which is a distance of delta x from the left hand side. So, the accumulation can be written as j x minus j x plus delta x and for a small delta x we can write this accumulation as j x minus j x plus dou j x by dou x into delta x and using the fact that dou c by dou t into delta x is equal to j x minus j x and which is the expression which you take down from here. This is in other words uh, can be thought of as the accumulation of material in this length of material uh, length of matter or length of material which is given by delta x. And now if you look at the uh, units of the left hand side which is dou c by dou x into delta x then we note that it is number of concentration can be written as number of atoms per unit volume, the time can be written as in seconds and the delta x is m. So, this is the accumulation we are talking about then simplifying it we find that it is atoms per meter square plus second which is nothing but the units of flux which is the right hand side. So, we can clearly see that the left hand side is the accumulation of matter in the length which is described by delta x. Now, therefore, we can simplify this expression by writing dou c by dou x dou c by dou t into delta x is equal to minus dou j by dou x into delta x which by introduction now for flux I can substitute the fixed first law which I know that j is equal to minus dou c by dou x therefore, dou c by dou t is equal to minus dou by dou x into minus d dou c by dou x. In other words dou c by dou t which is the change in concentration with time on the left hand side can be written as dou by dou x which is the gradient of the flux which is d dou c by dou x. And in the case that the diffusivity is not a function of x uh, we can write simplify this expression as dou c by dou t equal to d dou square c by dou x square which is known as the fixed second law. So, the fixed second law states that the concentration change with time is equal to the diffusivity into the curvature of the concentration uh, distance profile. Now, what happens if this uh, concentration distance profile has a negative curvature or if the concentration profile has a positive curvature. Now, if dou c by dou x square which is the curvature of this concentration x profile and on the right hand side we have got a negative curve curved kind of a profile of concentration with x on the left hand side we got a positive curvature of a C x plot and if the curvature happens to be positive then the composition will increase as time increases. In other words under these conditions you notice that the curve will actually go up because now dou c by dou t is a positive quantity that means the concentration at any x. So, I can consider any x here suppose this is x 1 at this x 1 the concentration with time will actually increase because the right hand side is positive. This therefore, the curvature of the C x plot will determine if the concentration is going to increase with time at a given x or it is going to decrease with time at a given x and suppose the curvature happens to be negative as is for the red curve on the right hand side. So, therefore, at any distance x 2 if I evaluate the curvature and I find that the curvature is negative that means dou c by dou t is negative and that implies as diffusivity is a positive quantity always therefore, dou c by dou t is negative that means the concentration at this point x of species say b will decrease with time and the curve this point will go down in time. So, as we see that the fixed second law is a differential equation which connects the uh, change in concentration with time with the second differential of change in concentration with the distance. And if we solve the fixed second law then we should be able to get the concentration profile at any given time. So, that means we should be able to get the concentration as a function of both position and time and therefore, I can find how the concentration profile changes into a material at different times. Now, this is a second order differential equation on the left hand side here and a solution to a second order differential equation can be determined based on the boundary conditions and the initial condition which we are imposing in a given problem.
a standard solution which works for many cases and we will consider some of these examples in the coming slides is what is called the error function solution. And the error function solution for this fixed second law which is dou c by dou t is equal to d dou square c by dou x square is c x t that means the concentration at any x at any given time is a minus b error function of x by 2 root d t d being the diffusive. So, on the right hand side inside the error function are the two variables which is x and time and the diffusivity is under square root in the denominator. A and B are arbitrary constants and these arbitrary constants will be determined based on the given physical problem which is in other words the boundary conditions and the initial conditions. <coughs> now, physically to understand this error function the definition of error function is suppose I want to consider the error function of gamma it is defined as 2 by root pi which is the constant outside the integral is equal to integral of 0 integral from 0 to gamma of exponential minus u square du. So, suppose I plot exponential minus u square you see the plot of this in the green curve here and this integral the definite integral from 0 to gamma represents the area under the curve in an exponential minus u square versus u plot. So, the exponential u square plot is given as a green curve the area under this curve is this area which is shown in blue color and this area from 0 to gamma represents the error function of gamma. So, there are standard tabulations of error function that means not only of error function, but also the inverse error function and from these tabulations I can solve for a given diffusion problem uh, in other words determine C x t uniquely given the boundary conditions and the initial conditions. There are some special properties of this error function like error function of infinity is 1, error function of minus infinity is minus 1, error function of 0 is 0 because the you can clearly see that the air, air area enclosed if you integrate from 0 to 0 will be 0 and uh, error function of minus x is equal to minus of error function of x that means it is if you substitute minus x instead of x then you will get the negative of the error function. Also as I was pointing out certain additional properties of the error function help us understand certain physical situations which we will take up in some of the coming slides. Like for instance if you consider a value of up to approximately about 0 0.6 the error function of x can be approximated to x. So, suppose I am talking about error function of 0 0.5 the value of the uh, at x equal to 0 0.5 then the error function is also approximately 0 0.5. And additionally suppose you are talking about x tending to a reasonably small value like 2 then the error function of x tends to 1. In other words quickly the error function saturates the area under the curve is mostly found in the small region in the axis which is close to 2 and the area found beyond that is actually very very small. So, suppose I am considering a physical diffusion situation then these properties of the error function will come in handy in understanding that which part of the material will not be affected say for instance diffusion of a species from a surface to the inside. So, these are good thumb rules which will help us understand certain physical situation based on the properties of the error function. So, to summarize in this slide the fixed second law has a solution which is a second order differential equation. Um, as a solution which is the one of given based on the boundary condition and initial conditions one of the important solutions is the error function solution which is a minus b error function of x by 2 root dt. Uh, a and b are arbitrary constants and can be determined from the boundary and initial conditions. The error function is defined as the area under the exponential minus u square versus u plot from 0 to gamma. So, that will be the error function of gamma. The error function has certain properties like error function of e infinity is equal to 1, error function of minus infinity equal to minus 1, error function of 0 is equal to 0 and error function of minus x is equal to minus error function of x. And additionally as I pointed out that when x goes to about 2 most of the area of the entire curve is enclosed almost there that means error function of x tends to quickly to 1 beyond that. And for about x equal to 0 0.6 the error function of x can be approximated to x itself. <coughs>
So, let us consider an example where this error function solution can be used. So, let us construct a bimaterial contact by taking a material A in contact with a material B. So, and suppose I am tracking the concentration at time t equal to 0, at time t equal to 0 the composition on the left hand side is C 2 of say a certain species and the concentration on the right hand side is C 1. So, the concentration profile give is given by this blue curve C 2 on the left hand side entirely and this is the joint part, this is the interface. and on the right hand side of the interface you would notice that the concentration is C 1. So, this is the starting concentration profile and we are heating typically heat the system and hold it at a constant temperature T 0. So, that the diffusion process can start and the concentration can change with time. Now, what happens suppose I track the concentration profile at a certain different time interval I would have noticed that that material would have diffused from from the left hand side onto the right hand side and similarly from left hand side to right hand side the material would have been lost and therefore, the concentration profile would look something like the green curve. At even later time you would notice that you will observe a profile which is like the red curve. In other words the concentration C 1 concentration on the right hand side originally which was only uh, material B is increasing with time. Now, for such a system we can apply the error function solution as written here on the right hand side and we can notice that we can use the initial conditions and the boundary conditions to evaluate the constants A and B in the error function solution. So, briefly again to tell you that what we are considering here we are considering a, a bimetal contact for instance which uh, could be any other material, but to simplify it could be a bimetal contact which has been welded together and therefore, there is an internal interface now and this whole system has been heated and kept at a constant temperature T 0 and we allow diffusion to take place. The diffusion would lead to change in concentration profiles with time and that means that originally on the right hand side the concentration of a species was C 1 which is constant, but with time the concentration increases and you will obtain profiles like the green curve and the red curve. So, I would like to know what exactly is this curve the profile the red curve and green curve. In other words I would like to know C x t and then I can for instance know how much time do I have to wait for to stop my diffusion experiment. Now, we know that <coughs> at time t equal to 0 for any positive x the concentration is C 1. So, this is one of the initial conditions. So, the right hand side the concentration is C 1 for any uh, x, but time equal to 0 that means the initial condition. Similarly, at any minus x. So, this being the origin of the uh, experiment. So, the x equal to 0 lies here. So, on the left hand side for any x the concentration is C 2 at time t equal to 0 and putting in these initial conditions I can notice that if I put x equal to 0 and from the previous slide we know that error function of 0 is 0 sorry we put t equal to 0 and so this becomes error function of infinity and therefore, error function of infinity is 1 therefore, I obtain C 1 is equal to A minus B. Now, suppose I introduce a second initial condition which is C minus x 0 is equal to C 2. Therefore, I can write C 2 is equal to on the left hand side the C x t becomes C 2 <coughs> is equal to A minus B and now for we are working in minus x domain and therefore, at t equal to 0 this goes to minus infinity and we know that error function of minus infinity is minus 1. Therefore, C 2 is equal to a minus minus 1 into b which means it is a plus b. So, a minus b is equal to c 1 a plus b is c 2 therefore, from these two equations we can evaluate the two arbitrary constants involved in this equation. Therefore, a becomes c 1 plus c 2 by 2 
and B becomes C 2 minus C 1 by 2. Now, therefore, suppose I substitute this C into the equation the error function solution, we can see that C x t becomes C 1 plus C 2 by 2 minus C 2 minus C 1 by 2 into error function of x by 2 root t t. Therefore, if I am talking about a certain time t, suppose I wait run this diffusion experiment for say 15 minutes um, or if I can convert that into seconds of course, and I want to know the concentration profile C as, as a function of x at after 15 minutes, then since I know all these are all constants, therefore I can plot the C x as a function of error function of 2 root d into uh, t knowing the of course, for this of course, I need to the material I need to know the material property which is diffusivity of say the species B. Therefore, we can see that if I have certain initial conditions, then I can determine the arbitrary constants involved in the uh, error function solution of the fixed second law and therefore, I can solve for the profile of the concentration at various times t and I can stop my diffusion experiment based on the requirement of how much material I need to diffuse in. In the simplistic solution, we had assumed that the diffusivity is not a function of concentration and if diffusivity happens to be a function of concentration, then you would notice that this uh, concentration profile which is simplistically shown here has a center of inversion here. So, this point at the center here the around the C average is a point of inversion and this inversion symmetry would be lost if you if the situation happens to be such that the diffusivity happens to be a function of the concentration. So, as a first approximation if I assume that the diffusivity is not a function of concentration, then this C average point along the uh, at the interface will be a point of center of inversion of all these concentration profile curves which have been obtained for various times. So, this is a nice uh, example wherein we are talking about uh, what you might call the error function solution uh, for a given set of initial conditions. So, when we talked about the fixed first law and when we, we introduced a constant called the diffusivity and we had pointed out that this diffusivity is a material property and could actually depend on the concentration of the material into for instance suppose species say for instance copper is diffusing into an alloy of say aluminum copper, then it could so happen that depending on the percentage of aluminum and copper the diffusivity of copper would change, but we said often we would like to assume that as a first approximation the diffusivity is independent of the concentration. But one thing is very clear as we pointed out that this diffusivity which is a material property is going to depend on the temperature. The way this depends on the temperature happens to be exponential in nature and therefore, I can write diffusivity as d 0 a temperature independent component and exponential of minus q by k t where k is the Boltzmann constant. Since t is in the denominator and this exponential as a negative they both sort of contract uh, can counter cancel each other and that implies that the diffusivity depends increases exponentially with temperature. Therefore, suppose I am doing a diffusion experiment at uh, say 100 degrees Celsius and do another experiment at 200 degrees Celsius, I cannot merely visualize this as just an 100 degree increase in temperature, but I have to understand that since diffusivity lies on the temperature, this is the diffusion rate is going to be extremely fast as compared to 100 degrees when I do the experiment at 200 degrees Celsius. This exponential dependence of diffusivity on temperature has extremely important consequences with regard to material behavior at elevated temperatures. And therefore, it becomes very challenging to design materials at high temperatures because of the fact this very dependence of diffusivity with temperature. Of course, there are other issues which come in when one is uh, trying to design a material for high temperature applications. Now, suppose I was talking about precipitate coarsening in the construct of diffusivity that means, I am putting a second phase particle uh, second phase precipitate which is used as a precipitation hardening system. Then if I hold the system at high temperatures, then what happens is that because of the enhanced diffusion rate at high temperatures, the coarsening of the precipitate will be very very fast and this material may lose its strength at elevated temperature. Similarly, oxidation involves mass transport. So, suppose I have a layer of uh, um, metal on which there is an oxide forming 
obviously uh, the oxygen from the uh, atmosphere has to diffuse to the metal oxide interface to oxidize further material and this or of course inversely of course the metal also could diffuse outward and get oxidized but both in any case you involve diffusion as the primary phenomena which is going to control this kind of an oxidation process and since at high temperatures this oxid this diffusion is going to be much faster the oxidation rate could be very fast and therefore you could have catastrophic oxidation of a surface at high temperatures which would be extremely deleterious um, when you're talking about creep mechanisms many of the creep mechanisms actually involve diffusion they may involve as we shall see later lattice diffusion or green boundary diffusion but they could involve diffusion and many of the some of the other creep mechanisms involve dislocation climb and dislocation climb further as we had seen before that actually involves diffusion therefore if you the diffusion rate is very very fast this implies that there is going to be an enhanced creep rate and and with increasing temperature also the creep mechanism may also change and leading to what you might call a faster creep rate and an earlier failure of the material therefore um, the problem of diffusion becomes very very important to address in the context of um, service of materials i mean use of materials at high temperatures given the equation d equal to d0 exponential minus q by kt where q is the activation energy for diffusion and later on we will try to correlate this uh, activation energy q with certain atomistic mechanisms which will tell us that what kind of an underlying mechanism is actually giving rise to this activation barrier for diffusion now um, before we go into the mechanisms of diffusion which is coming up in the next slide we had pointed out that that suppose i am holding a bimetal strip here and i wait for diffusion to take place i notice that with progressing time for instance you find that the say for instance material is slowly penetrating into the right hand side into material b and i would like to have an effective measure of what is known as the penetration depth suppose i want to carry on this uh, experiment such that um, my concentration profile reaches some value which i can call as c x so i want to know at some x what if i reach my concentration profile i can stop my diffusion experiment and suppose i am talking about a different kind of an experiment in which i am taking a material and i am imposing say for instance steel to a carburizing atmosphere and this will be actually one of the experiments we will take up uh, and solve a problem um, then i would like to know how long do i have to carry on this carburizing experiment so that an, i achieve an effective penetration of carbon to a certain depth which i would call the penetration depth so to understand this there are some effective formulas which i can use and one of these effective formula is the approximate formula for the depth of penetration so from this formula which is now you can see that i can see is given x equal to square root of dt i can use um, this formula knowing the diffusivity to know that how much time do i have to conduct an experiment before which i have say for instance a penetration of the material to a desired level now uh, for this we will consider one example briefly and this example happens to be for instance suppose i introduce a wire of material which is shown in black here say call this material b in a matrix of material a and start my diffusion experiment slowly of course of course uh, the initial concentration of the material will be little higher than the rod shown here later on you will see that this material which is shown in black actually will spread outward this uh, wire which has been embedded the material will diffuse outward and slowly you will notice that the concentration profile keeps changing with time and at a later time you might find a profile which is like this so initially there was a concentration c0 and later on uh, and you imposed a uh, central concentration cs and this concentration changes with time and i would like to know for instance say for instance i define a penetration depth to be a depth at which i obtain half the initial concentration and the half the initial concentration in other words i obtain c at that distance x at a certain time t minus c0 and cs minus c0 cs being the central concentration when c0 to be half so i call that the penetration depth for a given time okay. and this penetration depth suppose i denote by uh, 
x subscript half. So, in other words, I do my diffusion experiment for a certain time d such that at that distance the concentration is half that which is what originally imposed at the center because this concentration is not uh, assuming if suppose C 0 happens to be 0 then actually the concentration will be half of C s, but suppose I had initial concentration of the same material in the matrix A then I will have to talk about C s minus C 0 as the uh, uh, with respect to this I need to obtain the half the fraction. And uh, an error function solution for this can be written down as shown here that C x t minus C 0 is C s minus C 0 equal to 1 minus error function of x by 2 root d t. So, on the left hand side um, I know that the concentration ratio I, I am interested is in half that means the concentration there is half what was originally imposed and the right hand side will be 1 minus error function of x of half that is the distance I am interested I where the half the concentration is achieved by 2 root d t. And suppose I am talking about error function of some number being half that means that effectively I told you that it we are going back to a previous slide about the properties of uh, error function of x being approximately equal to x for uh, x values less than 0.6 and here I am talking about x value of half that means that error of error function of half is equal to half that means x square root of x I mean sorry x half divided by 2 root dt is equal to half and which can lead to this expression that x is equal to root of dt. So, we can see that we can have an approximate formula for what you might call the depth of penetration and this approximate formula I can use as a quick thumb rule calculation to find out that how long do I have to carry on this experiment to obtain a certain concentration for instance in this case it was half the concentration imposed at a certain um, at what depth I mean at a uh, how long do I carry on that the concentration at a certain x becomes half that of what I imposed on the surface. If you look at the concentration profiles at various times you would notice that again based on the fact that this uh, solution is an error function solution that beyond a certain depth practically there is no material that means all the material uh, that distance for a given time behaves like as if the distance is infinity. So, I call this distance as x infinity i e that is the depth be at which the concentration remains as the original concentration that means, I carry on my experiment for a certain time t and in spite of me diffusion taking place after a certain distance along the x axis there has been no penetration of the material and therefore, the original concentration which is C 0 remains. So, in other words I would like to know what is the distance beyond which the material remains unpenetrated in spite of me carrying a diffusion experiment for a certain time t. So, therefore, the left hand side becomes 0 and the right hand side becomes 1 minus error function of x infinity which is the unpenetrated distance by 2 root dt and error function of u is approximately 1 when u equal to 2 as we saw this property that by the time this error function tends to 2 the error function of x tends to 1 and therefore, I can write x infinity by 2 dt is equal to 2 and this implies that x infinity is about 4 root of dt. So, a distance uh, which is 4 root of d t beyond that the concentration profile has not been affected the concentration remains C 0 and therefore, now I have two formulae one is for a penetration depth where which we call the effective penetration depth where x can be called as x half another number a number which is I call x infinity a distance which I call x infinity beyond which there has been no penetration. So, suppose I actually have a sample and I am talking about carrying on a heat treatment for instance to um, introduce carbon into the material I can define an effective penetration depth and based on that I can do my experiment for a certain time and I can calculate the time quickly based on the distance to which I want to penetrate the uh, a species from the surface. So, this is a quick effective thumb rule formula which I can use in various experiments. Mm -hmm.